Madagascar, a magical island 150 million years old, with an incredible range of plants and animal species endemic to the country. Some say it is a living museum. But with the arrival of humans over the last few thousand years, this ecosystem has been forever altered. So when primatologist Patricia Wright first flew to Madagascar in the 1980s, deforestation had become rampant, with untold numbers of species being lost forever. When I looked down in Madagascar, I was so sad because the erosion and the destruction of the forest were, were just uh, incredible. And you, you could see, even from the air, how little forest there was left. At the time, she had recently finished her PhD at City College under the supervision of Warren Kinsey and John Oates. She had done fieldwork in the Amazon rainforest, in Peru and elsewhere, and then landed a job at the Duke Lemur Center, where... I fell in love with lemurs. They're just amazing animals, very, very peaceful, and yet they're primates. And I uh, went to Madagascar for the first time, and that's when I realized how very endangered they are. There's over 100 species of lemurs, 94% of them are either vulnerable or endangered or critically endangered. I realized that if we're going to study them, we're going to study them with the purpose of saving them. On the edge of Madagascar's Ranamafana National Park can be found Center Valbio, an international research station founded by Patricia Wright and her team in 2003. The center, working intimately with the Malagasy of Madagascar, aims to conserve and protect as much of the unique ecosystem of the forest as they can. But what set her and the people of Madagascar on this new journey to conservation? The discovery of a new species of lemur. Let's go back to 1986. Things were so different when we started out. The people here had no idea why I was there, and they had no idea why I thought that lemurs were so important. They had no idea about what the importance of nature was here. Wright had originally come to the country to study the mysterious greater bamboo lemur, but in her field work, she not only found that primate, but a new species of lemur, which she named the golden bamboo lemur. When I first saw it, I thought it was the one I had come to look for, which was the greater bamboo lemur. But they're not alike at all, because I found the greater bamboo lemur in the same forest. And one is gray, and one is orange, one is double the size of the other. The golden bamboo lemur, it was such a beautiful animal, uh, that beautiful golden color. And it eats only bamboo, so it's a very, has a special diet and a special behavior. The discovery of the golden bamboo lemur was a breakthrough. I went in there as a research scientist, just with my ideas about, you know, what I was going to study about uh, lemurs. But very soon, timber exploiters came in and they started to chop down the forest. And I went to the Capitol and talked to the Department of Water and Forest about the fact that I had just discovered a new species of lemur to science and I had rediscovered another one that we thought was extinct. And that those two species were, along with another 15, were in this rainforest and that they should be uh, saving it. And they said, well, yes, but this is Madagascar. We don't have enough money. So if you find money to save this forest, then we'll help you make a national park. And that's really the, when I became a, a conservationist because a conservationist is a person that works with the local people and also is a fundraiser because it, it requires a lot of funding to uh, save a national park, to make a national park. Studying a new species of, uh, of lemur has been certainly fun, but I think you know, saving the whole ecosystem is what I'd like to be known for. Wright received the MacArthur Genius Grant in 1989, which helped to establish Ranamafana Park as a national park in 1991. It was enough to get a lot done in Madagascar. I spent it in establishing the national park. And I would never have been able to get that 
that funding. We got $4 million from USAID, but not till 1990. So we kind of needed to get that park going, and that, that money in 1989 really jump-started us toward making that park possible. After this, the breadth of her work really expanded. Funding started to come in, and Wright established the Institute for the Conservation of Tropical Environments at Stony Brook University on Long Island. She would travel back and forth to Madagascar, expanding beyond lemurs and into the connected field of rainforest conservation. We needed a research station that was equal to the value of the biodiversity. I mean, this is some of the most extraordinary biodiversity in the world. I decided that we were going to establish right at the edge of the rainforest, a really extraordinary research station. These are all people, Malagasy people, that are totally dedicated to helping the people and the wildlife in Madagascar. The value of collaborating with the people who live in a particular area is something Patricia learned from her studies under Kinsey and Oates at City College. My success, I think, in Madagascar is that I was trained at CUNY to think about people as well as to think about animals. And, um, and, and that really assisted me later because conservation in Madagascar has to involve people. Wright has been called a force of nature, the Jane Goodall of lemurs, a warrior. Well, when you really look at it, there, it is like a battle that you're constantly fighting for conservation. And you may not be using, you know, guns and spears, but we use words to try to make things happen. It's a constant battle, uphill, <laughs> to try to make these things happen. And, and it requires a lot of energy. But the amazing thing is that in Madagascar, once you get to a certain point and they agree, they will work with you. I think the Malagasy, if you were interviewing them, would also say that we've accomplished a lot in these 30-some years, and uh, it really made a difference in Madagascar.